Welcome everyone. This is going to be a quick overview of the basics of the Singularity Computers Powerboard, just some of the main features and functions, the questions that were asked every day. The Powerboard has been out there for a few years now, but we've really put out very little information on it, and there are often a lot of questions. If you ever have any questions, please contact support at singularitycomputers.com. We answer all the emails within 24 hours, so you will always get a quick reply and it will most often be from me. And you know, we can help you out with any question as long as it's computer related. Before we get started, let's take a look at some of the latest power boards that we've designed. So this one here is for Proxima. And this one was specifically designed for Proxima. You'll notice that all of the power boards look very different. And that's because they're you know, specifically designed for a certain case this one here is for Wraith 3.0. This is another recent power board. You can see we have Direct Connect 2.5 inch mounts on it, but I won't go into all of the features of all of these, otherwise we'll be here all day. This one here is for the Spectre 3 Enterprise. And this one is for the EVGA E1. So this one has been out for quite a while now. This one worked out so nicely it also has a distribution plate that fits around the edge, L-shaped. And this one no one has ever seen before except for the Singularity Computers team. It is the Universal Power Board. And you'll be seeing a lot more on this one soon. And most importantly, we'll be answering the only question which matters, which is which cases does it fit into. But anyway, I just wanted to answer some of the questions that come up every day on the power board and it is mostly surrounding how the cables work so with every power board and case with a power board that you purchase you will receive a standard power board linking cable set so we call them power board linking cables these are special short cables and the EPS and 24 pin are arched so the the inner cable strands are shorter than the outer cable strands so that the cables can bend nice, clean, 180 degrees. And this is so that you can plug them in like this and then into your motherboard. So the 24 pin and EPS are like that, but then the PCIe or 12 VH power are not because they're a bit longer. So we're about to add a selector to our website for all power board products so that you can change between 8-pin PCIe and 12VH power. But yeah, standard set, 24-pin, 2x8-pin pin PCI, 2, 2 8 pin EPS, 3x8-pin PCIe, or a 12VH power cable. So that's the cables that go from the power board to your motherboard and GPU. If you need extra cables like 6-pin PCIe, 4-pin EPS, 6-pin supplementary power, you know, the extra 6-pin power for your motherboard. Those can be purchased separately. We didn't want to include all of those because, you know, a lot of them will just never even be used. So we just wanted to include a, a basic set with every PowerBoard product. You also need cables that go from the power supply to the PowerBoard, but you can use your stock PSU cables for this. But if you want something a little bit cleaner than bundling up all of your stock PSU cables down in the power supply shroud, we do have a PowerBoard PSU cable set. The reason this is not included with PowerBoard products is because it's specific to the power supply. Every power supply has a different pinout. And you know, this is one of the unfortunate things about power supply design. The cables are not one-to-one -one, like these linking cables. And by one-to-one, -one, I mean every strand goes straight. They're crisscrossed. They have split wires. And it's always different depending on the power supply. So, when you order one of these, you can input your power supply type and we will especially design, you know, the pinout, the cables for your PSU. And this is what a kit will normally look like. We mark the end that goes into the power board, the end that goes into the, the PSU just to make it super simple, even though you can't really plug it back to front anyway. We actually make these a little bit shorter now. This is a 30 centimeter set. We're now making them at 25 centimeters just because we found we can still maintain full compatibility with a bit shorter cable, so this is an older set. 
Now one of the th interesting things about the power board is that it shares power on some connections. So what this means when making no claims, but theoretically, if one connector, like let's say the GPU, pulls an extreme amount of power suddenly, well, it can also pull power from elsewhere if it needs to. But this also means that if you have a power supply without 12 VH power, you can run no adapters. So from the power supply on the input side of the power board, you can connect you know, your 24 pin EPS and PCIe. And on the output side, you can connect just a single 12 VH power cable from the power board to your GPU. So nice and clean, single cable, and it's all designed so that you'll get full 600 watts in that configuration. The power board is one big hub for PWM and ARGB. So there is a single PWM and a single ARGB input which you can see here, which needs to be connected to any PWM or ARGB output on your motherboard. So there's a lot of outputs. You can see them all around PWM and ARGB on the power board and they're optimally positioned for the radiator fans. You know, this one here for the GPU water block, but there's only a single input for each and included cables come with every power board for the PWM and ARGB input. So it's very important that the motherboard outputs go to the power board inputs for PWM and ARGB, otherwise it will not work properly. The power board has onboard power and reset buttons, extra ones here. It also has touch a touch activated power button just here. So if you touch this from around the back, it will turn the system on and if you touch it again, it will turn the system off. To access those features, we have included these cables which run from your motherboard, power and reset buttons, and also LED, and they need to be connected just down here. And if you don't want to use those features, you can just connect the power button on your case directly to the motherboard and bypass all of it. So I think this covers some of the the main features, the way the power board works, the questions that we get the most often. But I just wanted to mention a little bit about how different it is to build with a power board. So I've been building high-end custom liquid cooled systems for many years and the average build used to take about a week and most of that time goes into custom cables. So this is your average custom cable set and this is only the core component cables, so 24 pin PCIe EPS. It's not including all of the other behind the scenes cables for fans, lighting, pumps, you know, maybe an Aquero or whatever else you've got in there, which actually take even longer to do all of those cables because what we do is we customize the cables to length. We're not just shoving excess bundles of wires down into gaps. So to make a set like this, even for a very skilled cable builder, takes at least a day, probably more. And you know, we've made thousands of these over the years. So we've put a lot of time into making custom cables. And that's because every one of these wire strands needs to be cut to length, stripped, crimped, sleeved, and then plugged in. So even just one of these wire strands, by the time it's sleeved and crimped, you know, it takes a significant amount of time to build it. And as I said, that's just the core components. Once you start playing around with fans and RGB, you're going to be there for a lot longer. So it's just days on custom cables. With the power board, you don't need to do any of that. You have the linking cables already included. And all you do is you just go click, click, and it's done. And there's no cable management to do. There's still a little bit of cable management that you might want to do, depending on how you have your RGB and PWM set up but it really depends on your choice of fans. There are fans now that can be daisy chained and you can really just eliminate all of those problems as well. This case is a bad example actually because it's a, a prototype. This is Spectre 3 Integra Proxima Elite Limited Edition. And we have a lot of extra RGB running here because we were just testing going overboard with the light. So yeah, you would have a lot of, if you wanted to run this many lights, you would have some extra cables to manage. 
Anyway, I hope that helps. And if you have any further questions, please contact us at support at singularitycomputers.com.